Father, this morning, oh God, how we love you. And we just come before you to worship you. And we want you to have your way in us, God. We know that we're in the midst of transformation by your spirit. That none of us have arrived yet. But we're not where we used to be. But we're not actually where we're going. So Holy Spirit, we ask you to come. Come heavily today. Rest on us. Oh Holy Spirit, Father God, in the name of Jesus, reveal to us the things that you want us to know today by the Spirit of the living God. Do what only you can do because you're amazing. In Jesus' name, we ask these things. And all God's people said, Amen. Okay, how is everybody? Nobody's stressed out about Thanksgiving, right? Good, 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 because we don't want to be. Because this is the thing. This is going to be a time for you to, to be a light in your family's lives. You know, not everybody has families that are all light. Some people don't know Christ yet. And so this is your opportunity to be light. That doesn't mean that you go in trying to preach and transform them. But what you do do is you allow the Holy Spirit the time that he needs in your life to transform you and bring courage and boldness to you so that when you're in the midst of those that you might feel like are like stay away that that you know how to walk that you know how to talk that God says in his word that he will fill your mouth with words and wisdom that the enemy won't be able to contradict nor resist and so it's important that we allow the Holy Spirit to do the work in us first so that so that he can do the work through us. Amen. Amen. Because it's all about him. So, you guys, this is really strange. So I'm just going to go there this morning. Um, and I'm just going to allow the Holy Spirit to work. Go with me to Matthew chapter 24. This is what I was hearing. So I have to be obedient and just do what he says. Amen. Matthew chapter 24. And we are going to go to... No one knows the day or the hour. So that is in verse 36. 1141 is the page number. So the Bibles are the same in here. And hopefully you ha you're in a row where we've got some. Uh, we have to do some work in this sanctuary. We're missing stuff. So, um, so I'm just going to read this. And I'm just going to allow the Holy Spirit to, to bring forth the word that he has for all of us today. Amen. So starting in verse 36, it says, But the day, that day, an hour no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. So the day and the hour is not known to anybody except for the Father only. Amen? But as the days of Noah were, so also will be the coming of, of the son of man be for as in the days before the flood they were eating and drinking marrying and given in marriage until the day that noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them all away so also will be the coming of the son of man then two men will be in the field. One will be taken and the other one will be left. Two women will be grinding at a mill. One will be taken and the other one left. Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known the hour that the thief would have come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore, you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. So, Father, I pray you take this worn out by the Spirit of the living God, and I pray, Lord, that you bring it about how you want us to hear it today in Jesus' name. Amen. And so this morning, what I was hearing is actually in verse 40, when it says the two men will be in a field, one will be taken and the other one left. 
two women will be grinding at the mill and one will be taken and the other left. And I was thinking about that because when I was younger, when I was a kid and I, I heard this verse somewhere, I used to think, well, it's kind of important who you're hanging with, who you know, right? And I'm thinking, well, God, what if there's two Christians together? What if there's, you know, a Christian and a non-believer? Pretty much is the tell story of it. But I feel like the Lord is saying, be the one. <coughs> we need to be the one. Because I want to be the one taken. Now, I certainly don't want my brother or sister to be left behind here on this earth. I don't mean my brother and sister as in family ties. I'm talking about people in general. Because the word of God teaches that for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. But he also says that he doesn't want one to perish. So anybody that perishes, perish by their own will. Because someone, somehow, will have the opportunity to receive Christ. To become a believer. Not just come and sit in church. But absolutely no. We don't come to church out of obligation. Yes, I know that we're called to be faithful. So sometimes you got to make yourself go to church. Even when you don't want to. And be part of events. Even though you don't want to. And that's just part of dying to your flesh. And serving the Lord. But the other part is, is a desire. A desire to serve God. A desire to be the one. And I hear the Lord saying, are you the one? Are you the one? Do you know without a doubt that you're the one? Or do we sometimes get kind of self-righteous and we know that we're the one, but the one next to us we're condemning and looking at them, not even understanding that you're the one to bring them into the kingdom of heaven through the spirit of God that lives inside of you and lives inside of me. Sometimes we just look at us and where we're at and what we want, and I hear the Lord saying, be the one. Not only the one to be taken, but the one to spread, the one to plant seeds, the one to be aware that we are in an hour where he can come anytime. I know my grandparents, you know, they, they served the Lord. And I remember as a little girl doing crafts and grandma saying how Jesus would come at any time. Absolutely, he could have. Thank you that you waited for me to get saved. And he's got grace and patience and mercy waiting for the world to know him. Not just know of him, but know him. And I hear the Lord saying, be the one. Not just for you, but for the person next to you. The people that you work with. The people that watch your children. Your family. And that doesn't mean that you try to be something that you're not. But if you allow him to be the one in you, then you can be the one for him. But if you don't allow him to be the one in you, then you're going to be dingy before other people because they're going to see your flesh. They're going to see you. They're going to see the stuff that you struggle with. And I'm not saying be fake, but don't go backwards. Don't grow weary in well-doing. Don't grow backwards because the enemy would love to get you backwards. To take your testimony so that people won't look at you. Oh, yeah, she says she's a Christian, but, you know, I got her to do this and she did that. Oh, he says that he's a Christian, but I don't ever see him serving God. I just see him at church, but I don't ever see him doing anything. By the way, I don't know who shoveled at um, Healing Room Saturday, but you guys know we have cameras everywhere outside and and uh, it goes off when people walk in front of them. And I didn't, I didn't look, but I, later on I, I tuned in and I was so excited to see the outcome and the turnout. And I noticed that somebody thought about shoveling without being asked. They went out there and shoveled the path so that the people coming in had a safe place to walk. I love that because it shows the heart of the person that was thinking, the heart of the person that is serving. They didn't do it for y'all because they knew you'd be safe and you certainly can't shovel the whole driveway out there. But with the shovel, it was shoveled for safety. So be the one. Be the one to serve the Lord with everything that is in you. Be the one to serve the Lord and be the example for those that are around you. Not snooty, not looking down at them, but be who you are in Christ because Christ lives. He lives and he's alive. 
And he has put something inside of each and every one of us for this community, for our families, for this state. It goes beyond where we're just at, especially when we have friends outside of our church house and outside of our house. People are watching and people are looking. And let me ask you something. Don't put your hands up. But how many people are being contacted because somebody needs prayer? And that person might not be a regular church attender, but they know you are, and they see your walk. People that normally just want to live their life their own way, and all of a sudden, they're asking you to pray for them. They're the ones standing next to you. One will go, and one will be taken. So our job is to be the overflow of heaven and other for other people's lives that means you got to die to you you got to die to flesh when you serve in healing rooms you got to die to flesh because you don't get to pick and choose where you're going to be you have to allow your leader to be in prayer to know where god wants you to be because he is the only one that knows who's coming in he is the only one that knows the gifts that he's implanted inside of you who he is who's bringing them out and not everybody's supposed to pray not everybody's supposed to greet not everybody's supposed to be a host and in the beginning we were moving everybody around and now we're just pressing in god who do you want where and and who do you want where no matter who it is and uh, i was talking to somebody this week and 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 they were complaining a little bit and i said stop complaining you know i don't i don't want to hear the complaints because complaints basically well up because of our flesh and also maybe because we have fear of man and maybe because we're afraid of what other people are going to think of us well you have to die to that you've got to die to who you are and where the enemy tries to bring you down so that you don't serve the serve god and that you don't follow your leaders you know, and God says you need to follow your leaders. He put people as leaders for reasons. And so even though sometimes you don't want to follow your leaders, God wants to see your heart and have your heart be to him and be first obedient to him and then be obedient to your leaders as long as they're not asking you to do something that is not of him, right? And so whenever he builds up these new ministries within our church, you know, God's going to raise up new leaders because everybody has different gifts. But you know what it's for? So there's not one that's going to go and one that's going to stay. His heart is that all come into the kingdom of heaven. His heart is that our lives be a reflection of him and his love. He wants to operate in signs, miracles, and wonders. He's the same as yesterday. He's the same as 2,000 years ago. He's the same as he's always been. We just get in the way because we carry the presence of the almighty God within us. And as we lay down our junk and as we lay down our lives so that he can live, then he can live. So he's looking for the person to be the one. And I want to be the one. And I will tell you at times I am not the one. I struggle like everybody else does. But quickly the Lord rebukes me and I'm glad because I need to repent. Can I tell you that the word of God teaches that he draws near to the broken? So you all and me all need to be broken somewheres. The reason is, is he wants to draw near to us, but unfortunately, when we're not walking in some type of a broken state, we feel like we don't need a savior. We got it. We got our plans. We got our cars. We got our houses. We got our money. We got our friends. We got everything that we need. And all of a sudden, we forget about the one that we truly need. And we don't do it on purpose. We don't ignore God on purpose. It's just that when you have brokenness somewheres in your life, whether it's somebody that's connected to you or your heart is broken for the loss, there's a brokenness when you have a, when you have a desire for the loss to come in to the kingdom of heaven. Why? Because you are are not thinking about you and what you are going to do you're thinking about them going to hell which was not made for man and you don't want to see him go there but we're afraid but what about this scripture wow god yeah do you know that like one's going to be 
two people are going to be in the field and one's going to go and one's going to stay, that's going to make a person think. Because when I remember this scripture, I wasn't serving God. And I thought, yeah, I'm not like really serving you, God. I know you. I'm going to go to heaven. I'm pretty sure I'm going to go to heaven. Hmm. What if I'm the one that stays? Any of y'all ever watched that movie, Left Behind? Do you know how many Christians and churches in that movie were left behind? Because it's not about church. It's not even about reading your Bible. It's about personal relation. You can quote all you want. You can heal the sick and raise the dead. But without a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, we're lost. We have nothing. You, that's what can be so tricky because there's so much witchcraft in the world. There's people out there that are doing things that churches are doing, but the, war, the Lord warns us about them. He says, you'll know false prophets by their fruit. So you've got to look for the fruit. You've got to look for the fruit of leaders. You've got to look for the fruit of friends in your life. You have to look for the fruit. Now, mind you, don't expect fruit on a one-year-old Christian that you're seeing on a 10-year-old Christian. And you know what? The one-year-old Christian's fruit is probably very sweet, sometimes compared to the 10-year-old Christian because it's gotten pretty ripe. And nobody's been picking the fruit off our trees lately. What does healing rooms do? It produces a fruit that people can come in and pick off your tree so that their fruit will now be produced more and fruit will come into you and the word of the Lord and the word will spread. And yes, healing is for today. Prayer is what makes it happen. That's why Cooper is okay and we need to keep him covered. Anytime we have healing rooms coming up, we always have warfare. Everybody had warfare, but you have to press through it and you have to die to your own warfare to the fact to do your part, pray, believe, keep praying, but keep pushing. Keep pushing darkness back because it shall not have the ones that he, are, he is sending here Amen. to be prayed for. The ones that are looking not for a Lynn to pray for her, not for Jan to pray for her, but looking for Jesus to come through anybody he chooses. Yes, some of us can be more comfortable with the person here and there, but that doesn't mean you always get that person because that comfort zone, sometimes we need to be out of that. We need to have people pray for us that don't know a thing. Not the ones that are outside that are helping us mature and grow and do. It's just about hearing Jesus. Be the one. Be the one. He says he'll fill our mouths with words and wisdom that the enemy cannot, cannot contradict nor resist. Noah was the one. Noah was the one that listened to God in the days of Noah, and Noah saved a people. It might have been just a few, but he still saved a people. Be the one. Build the ark and invite the people into the ark that God has put before you, that you know are living like hell, laughing about going to see their friends down there. That's not even funny, but in the world it is. But it's not funny. There's utter darkness. There's no peace. Utter, I can't imagine not being able to see my face before my hand and hear the wails and the gnashing of teeth. That in itself is scary. I don't want to go there. And that's not why I accepted Jesus. That was one of the revelations, but I accepted him because I encountered his love. I encountered it. I encountered it through people, and I encountered it through presence. So we create an atmosphere of presence here through pre-service and service and worship. And sometimes we have to be stretched, and we have to be mentored, and we have to do things in excellence before the Lord. Yes, he'll show up regardless of our issues and our mistakes. But when our hearts are to be bowed down before him so that he can have his way to save this community through all of you, 
and your families through all of you, or at least be the seed planter. Somebody else will come and water. Somebody else will harvest. There's so many seeds that you all have planted into people that are not here, that ran through this place, almost 8,000 people when the rehab was here that some of those people are walking really close to God today. Some of those people fell away back into addiction and died right away. Some of those people have children that they're raising and in praise on worship teams. You sowed. Someone else harvested what you sowed into. They weren't meant to stay here. That wasn't our part. Our part was to sow seeds to help people come into the kingdom of heaven so that when the day comes, they're the one that will be taken. Well, I believe that God wants everyone to come into the kingdom of heaven. That's what it was created for. Every person that is created, man, woman, child, every one of us are created for a purpose, and that's to walk with him. I know it seems impossible sometimes to us to serve Jesus, but you can if you stop serving you. If I stop serving me, it doesn't mean that Jesus wants you to be just oh, hum dumb. That's not what he wants. He wants you to walk with a spring in your step and a song in your heart. He wants you to bring something into the atmosphere that is lacking that only he has, and you bring it, you can walk into an atmosphere and you can be a complainer like everybody else is right there in that little group, or you can come in and break it up by the Spirit of God because all of a sudden they're not comfortable, especially if, if they're Christians. Because us Christians, we get complaining. One of the things that, um, and you guys all know this, but I certainly hope you're all good tippers, but um, on Sundays after church, big boy here in town, um, sometimes I would hear some of the rudest things said by Christians because we demand our service and we demand it and we're not always nice about it. And so when you see that somebody is just a wreck, you know, what do you do with that? You know, and I'm not saying that maybe some of us need to say, hey, you know what? I see you're struggling today. They won't like that. But if you say, I'd really like to pray for you. Is there something I can pray for you that's going on? That doesn't mean you have to grab their hands right there, you know, but why they're out serving food, you can say a prayer with your food to bless them and to make their day better and let them know that, that you care about them more than you care about if your eggs are hot. I like my food hot. I like to eat it hot. I do not like it cold at all. Uh, and sometimes I order wrong. I order, uh, what did I order wrong the other day, Dan? It was terrible. American I couldn't fries. eat it. American fries. And I, she brought me American fries. And I said, oh, that's not what I ordered. I ordered a uh, hash brown. She goes, no, that's what you said. I'm like, okay. So I just took it. My husband ate it. So, uh, but... I, because, you know, I can do that. I can order wrong, but I like my food hot. So now i got to think about my presentation to the waitresses, to the postmen, to the grocery store clerks, to the price of food. It's not their fault. They just work there. You know, it's like, what are we doing? What, what do we look like out in our community? Are we trying to bring a person in? Let's be the one to bring the person in to the kingdom of heaven. Amen. So it, it's, it's such a task. It's far greater than we are. That's why we need the spirit of the living God to do it in us. So we need him to create a passion. Stir a passion. Create it. And then when you start to feel it, go after it. Go after it in prayer. Go after it by going out and trying to find what the Lord is trying to show you. And then take a risk in faith. And do what he's telling you to do and see what happens. I'm not saying that every time what you do is going to be received. But there will be times what you do will be received and it will be worth it. Look at how long we've been sewn into healing rooms. Consistently, every other month now, we do not shut it down. Every other month. We, don't know, we know better than to try to do it every month because our body is small. So in order to make it work according to the Spirit, we're doing it every other month. And it happens to fall on the months that are the most busiest, not on the months that are the most busiest for families. 
Like we don't have it in December. We don't have it in July because the way that it falls is perfect because that's the way that the Lord wrote, raised up healing rooms. But we've been sowing into it a long time, trying to disciple people and say, hey, share it. Get it out there. Let people know. Just trust God. Keep your heart right. Make it through the warfare. Just keep plunging at it. Keep doing. Keep pushing. Believe. Believe beyond your feelings. Believe beyond your circumstances because God called us to do this and he's the only one that gets all the glory. All of the glory. <clears throat> and so what he's put on my heart for several weeks now is give you the glory and that's what we sang today. He gets all the glory for healing rooms. Nobody gets it but him. Yes, he's raised you up and blessed you with his spirit, but it's his spirit. He raised you up to be a leader, but it's his leading, spirit of God leading through you. He raised you up to be whatever God is calling you to be, an intercessor, somebody that's a host, somebody that's a greeter, security, whatever it is, media in the back. It's all part of the body. And, and, and even, even in healing rooms, that is a body function. But the head of it is Jesus. And he gets the glory, guys. And I know you know that. But it says we can't take credit for even the breath in these lungs. It says it's, is it in the work you've done? No, this heart's a vessel. And I love that it pours out. You see, when you're pouring out for other people, you're pouring out the heart of God. And if you're not and you're using God to manipulate, oh, he knows that. He knows if you're trying to say and do or you get into your flesh. But as you recognize that you're doing that, lay it down right away. Say, God, I'm sorry. I realize that I just started taking off in my own. I'm sorry. I needed to stop so your spirit could just penetrate and move. I give you the glory, all of the glory. I give you the glory again and again. This praise isn't for me. My worship is only to give you glory forever and ever, forever. Amen. There's only one name who deserves every song, who's worthy, who's worth my reverence and my purest response. I don't know about you, but my response isn't always pure. My response is, all right, God. That's obedience. Rather, I like it or not. But what he does is change my heart. Even through, the, all right, God. This must be you. I'm going to do it. And then you get blessed. And you get hit with a wave of glory like, oh, my gosh, that was awesome. God, forgive me that I was just whining and complaining. And wow, it's not a chore. It's a gift. What he's given us isn't a chore. Healing rooms is not a chore. It's a bit tear down and set up, and we all did it. Everybody that was here Thursday night stayed. We had a very small group on Thursday night, but they all stayed, and we got her done. Maybe that wasn't like, oh, yeah, I, yeah I'm just going to stay. This is, But you did it. And everybody was laughing. And everybody was saying, what else can I do? What else needs to be done? That's a body walking in the unity of peace for the kingdom of heaven, no matter what we do. I'm just using healing rooms because it was just here yesterday. So there's only one name who deserves every song, who's worth the reverence and my purest response. The name of Jesus, high above every other, it's all for you. Oh, it's all for you. David, you want to get ready? So we give you, God, the glory. All of the glory, I give you glory again and again. This praise isn't for me. It's my worship only to give you glory forever. Amen. 
So the Lord is saying, be the one. Be the one. Let's pray. Lord, I pray that we'll be the one. I pray, Father God, that we will be the one to serve you. That we'll be the one in the field. That we'll be the one in the plants and in the families. But God, that you use us so the one next to us goes to heaven too. So the one before us knows you too. Oh God, we give you glory. I pray that your spirit would move mightier in our lives. And I pray, Father God, that this season, this week of Thanksgiving, that we truly take time to be thankful first to you and then for our families, even the ones that rub us the wrong way, but that somehow we would be a blessing to them because of your spirit that's living inside of us. God, I thank you, and I praise you, and we give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, all God's people said,